Hi, it's Dwyer. It is May 1st, 2022. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, before I get into Shakur Stevenson's destruction of Oscar Valdez, let me just tip my hat to Katie Taylor. I haven't seen the fight yet. I'm still in shock that she won. I thought Amanda Serrano would ring her bell, so to speak, right? I thought Serrano would win anywhere they fought, especially in New York City, right? But according to reports, Katie Taylor, who was down in the fight, made a comeback in the later rounds. That's championship stuff. And she did so in New York City against a fighter who I felt had a bigger punch than her. Right? So let me just tip my hat, acknowledge that I was wrong about the Taylor Serrano fight. Uh, it's one of those things where I have to see it for myself. Um, Katie Taylor certainly exceeded my expectations, and I congratulate her. Now let's talk about this Shakur Stevenson, Oscar Valdez fight. Now, let me uh, just say, we're going to have to start using the G word, which, of course, Stevenson, the word great. You know, these two guys, both unbeaten going into the fight, really had different ceilings, right? Oscar Valdez's limitations really were exposed by Shakur Stevenson. Understand, Valdez, when he goes backward, really doesn't have offense on his back foot. It was never more obvious than in this fight. So when Oscar Valdez starts to go back, you understand that's an opportunity for Shakur Stevenson to go hunting. Let me say this too. Valdez, who's fighting out of a right-handed stance, really doesn't have what I call ring coverage on that overhand right hand, right? That straight right hand, he really doesn't have ring coverage on it. This is the opposite of Deontay Wilder, where you understand that it's perilous if you aren't fully prepared when he throws that straight right hand, right? He can hit you from across the street, as I like to say. Here, the straight right is one of Valdez's most effective punches in the fight, and he's fighting a southpaw, right? But understand, even though it's his dominant hand based on his stance, his right-handed stance, right? He's throwing his right hand straight. You can tell that that straight right hand is not enough to knock down Shakur Stevenson. In other words, that right hand is really a table setter for him to jump inside with a left hook. So Stevenson, and I don't say this about every fighter. In fact, I say it about very few. But you need to cross out the date on Stevenson's birth certificate, right? This isn't a young fighter. Maybe he's chronologically young. I'm not questioning the date. But I'm just telling you, Stevenson is constantly thinking. This is Terrence Crawford as a young man. Stevenson is an old soul. Right. As you watch the fight, you thought to yourself, you know what? The person who knows all about Oscar Valdez's limitations is his opponent. So Stevenson understands that Valdez's best punch is his left hook. So Stevenson, whose right hand lines up with... Valdez's left hand, 
right? Stevenson is sticking his right hand out at first as a jab, then as a space maker. In other words, first he's jabbing, then he has it lingering. You can tell it's really to, you know, be a range finder, right? So first it's a space maker, then it's a range finder. Then he just starts sticking the hand out, right? Um, which isn't legal. He actually gets warned about that a few times by Kenny Bayless. But Stevenson, and Crawford does the same thing, by the way. Stevenson figured out that as long as Valdez was far enough away, there wasn't anything Valdez could do in terms of landing that left hook, right? Because that left hook required Valdez to be close to Stevenson. So Stevenson, from early, in the first round, let, let's discuss the first round. First round's a masterpiece, right? You can tell a lot about a fight during the slow rounds. But Stevenson figured out that as long as Valdez was a certain distance away from him, he couldn't get hit with Valdez's left hook. And Valdez, understand, is tightly wired. He really can't play games with his feet. In other words, this isn't the guy who is doing a lot of leg feints. This isn't Roy Jones, right? A guy who's bending at the knees and convincing you that he's going to do something else. Right? This isn't the guy who has a little drop step move where he looks like he's actually throwing a right hand and then suddenly pivots. Oh, he's in position to throw a left hook. Right, Valdez just isn't that fighter. And Shakur Stevenson knows it. Right, folks? The fight gets so one-sided that Stevenson at times completely stops throwing his right lead, right? Because Stevenson understands he doesn't need a hand up if the guy he's facing is too far away to throw his left hook. So the fight descends into total domination, right? Stevenson is able to know when Valdez is throwing punches. Stevenson can move out of the way when Valdez throws a punch, right? Valdez, who's loading up because he realizes he needs a knockdown, at least, to get back in the fight on the scorecards. Realistically, with several rounds to go, Valdez needed a knockout to win the fight. Right? Valdez is coming in, loading up on shots. And Stevenson, who knows the punch is coming, not only moves out of the way, but then as Valdez throws the punch and has nothing to catch himself with, Stevenson is then able to hit Valdez. In other words, Stevenson moves out of the way and into position to counter Valdez. So let's talk about something that's being misreported here in some articles. Understand, the knockdown in the sixth round is about as bad as it gets. Right? Stevenson is actually close to the ropes. He's between Valdez and the ropes. So Valdez comes in and lunges at Stevenson. Right, Stevenson has set up an optical illusion. So as Valdez lunges at Stevenson, Stevenson moves out of the way. Of course Valdez is off balance. Folks, he's off balance, by the way, in the first round a couple of times. Lunging in, Stevenson vanishes, and Valdez is throwing punches into thin air. That's dominance in and of itself. 
But understand, after Valdez lunges in and misses Stevenson, Stevenson is there to clock him. Valdez goes down. Right? So we can talk about how Valdez was off balance. Understand that's part of Stevenson's plan. <laughs> Stevenson earns the knockdown in the fight because his plan is to put Valdez off balance, and he does so masterfully. Masterfully. Let me also point out, too, that Stevenson, who's tall, looks like he's leaning over the pocket. But then you realize he's not. Because when Valdez throws, including when Valdez throws right before getting dropped in the sixth round, Stevenson is able to lean his body way back. Way back. So Stevenson can lean his body way back, and Stevenson's unafraid. So Stevenson will lean his body way back because he knows the punch Valdez is throwing at him can't really hurt him that much. Because Stevenson is acutely aware at all times, as is Tyson Fury, about the spacing between the fighters. So he knows Valdez doesn't have the ring coverage, the ability to throw long power shots that can hurt him. So if Valdez starts from too far away, Stevenson will just lean back, let the punch swing by him, and be throwing a millisecond after Valdez. Right, so Stevenson's counter lands Stevenson is luring Valdez into his punches. So let's talk about the first round because that's a jaw dropper for me. You understand Valdez has to be front foot heavy, right? His skill set doesn't allow him to rely on his back foot, right? Because he doesn't have ring coverage because his straight right hand out of a right hand stance doesn't have a lot of power on it, right? His strength is hooks. Hooks require you to be closer to your opponent. So in the first round, I was expecting Valdez to try to crash the pocket. He needed to make the fight a close-up fight. Right, Stevenson, taller guy, long arms. I thought maybe Valdez would want to get inside of Stevenson's arms. Smother Stevenson. Make this fight a grappling fight where he's close enough to land hooks on Stevenson. So I thought Stevenson in response was going to be on his back foot early was going to create space early by moving away from Valdez. Instead, what we get is a masterpiece. Folks, the calmest person in the building in the first round is Shakur Stevenson. Understand, the referee, Kenny Bayless, is more excited. The guys doing the fight, Andre Ward, Timothy Bradley, they're more excited. Here is Stevenson in the biggest fight of his career, a unification match at 130 pounds. And as Valdez comes across the ring aggressively and tries to get Stevenson up on the ropes, to my utter amazement, Shakur Stevenson allows a pocket to form. He doesn't run away. He lets Valdez come up close, but Stevenson has a weapon, and it's a major weapon. He uses it to completely dominate the first six rounds, right? I gave Valdez the third round, but let's say by the midway point of the fight, you understood that this weapon was so lethal, Stevenson was not going to be outboxed, and that's his jab. Right? As Chavez runs in, Stevenson 
who clearly knew Chavez at the opening bell. In other words, he's prepared for Chavez. Stevenson just calmly throws a jab. He doesn't even put a lot of emphasis into it. This isn't a Larry Holmes jab. He's not leaning into the jab to, you know, blow up the opponent. No, he's just throwing the jab to maintain the distance between himself and Valdez's left hook and a throw off Valdez's timing. Right? Stevenson has excellent rhythm. It doesn't come through on the punch stat numbers. You just need to realize that when you see a guy with excellent rhythm like this, Stevenson, Floyd Mayweather, they can be extremely calm. Extremely calm. Because for them, they know he's not close enough to me to throw the left hook. I can hit him as he comes in. He'll be open for the jab because he's trying to load up on a left hook and I'm a southpaw and my jab's a right hand. So Stevenson comes out and I just have to say he tames Oscar Valdez on one punch. It's his jab. This is one of those fights where, don't get me wrong, Stevenson has a lot of other things going on. Stevenson's immensely talented. His left hand is landing, uh, both up top, but the body shots are really debilitating with that left hand, and that's his main hand. Don't get me wrong. Stevenson has a lot of things he could have thrown at Valdez, but this is the fight where a great fighter was able to no, he had the fight won just off his jab. The first six rounds are really an exercise in Stevenson using his timing, using his awareness of space to have Valdez lunging in, literally lunging into Stevenson's jab. Let me tell you too, the first round has a couple of moments where Chavez lunges in, excuse me, Valdez lunges in and completely misses Stevenson. In other words, Stevenson has an optical illusion going where the guy fighting him thinks Stevenson is tethered to the pocket. But as the guy lunges in, Stevenson is able to move just enough where the opponent misses him completely. Understand, too, Stevenson's timing allows him to be a master counterpuncher with both hands. So I want to be respectful here because Valdez was unbeaten. Valdez does have a punch. Valdez is an aggressive fighter with a lot of pride. But Valdez in this fight was completely out of his league. Folks, revisit the first two rounds. Look at the big punches Valdez throws. That misses Stevenson entirely. Also, look at Stevenson's accuracy. Right, folks? There's a moment here where Stevenson throws a punch that hits Valdez in the stomach. It's so dramatic, right? It literally stops the action that the announcers announcing the fight said, oh, that's a low blow. Then they show you the replay, right? The referee in real time thought it was a low blow. Folks, that's a belt line shot. That was a legal punch. It's just that... <laughs> It's just that Stevenson lands it so flush and so seamlessly and Valdez just stops fighting that you think it's a low blow. I know some of you are going to disagree with me in the comment section. Please go ahead and do so. All I'm asking is for you to rewatch that shot. So we're dealing with a guy here who's clearly 
clearly among the best in the sport pound for pound. Right? You need to realize that this guy is still in his mid-twenties. A lot of the guys who are great fighters right now, and let me tip my hat to Southpaws, right? Terrence Crawford, Alexander Usyk, right? Add in Shakur Stevenson, you have the Southpaw Trinity here, right? Of really high-skilled fighters who know how to use range finders, right? Who know how to throw the jab in such a way where it's not called probing. But you and I know the real purpose of the jab is just to figure out the distance, the space between you and an opponent, right? If you want to see a range finding fest, look at Terrence Crawford against Sean Porter, where Crawford looks like he's throwing punches, but you notice the real goal is just to get the spacing on where Sean Porter is. Another range-finding fest is the second Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder fight, where Fury's just throwing his hand out there just to make sure he's far enough away from Wilder not to get hit with Wilder's spectacular straight right hand. Well, add this to the equation. Here you have a master fighting a hooker, right? Valdez needs to hook you to hurt you. He can land the straight right, but it's not going to knock you down. And so here you have Shakur Stevenson throwing a range finder, right? He starts by throwing jabs. Then later, you notice he's just sticking the hand out just to be able to throw his own hooks, to know, okay, if I can extend my hand, if Valdez is a certain distance away from me, then I can take chances because I know the guy can't hurt me from that distance. Worse yet, if I get the guy backing up, he can't hurt me at all. So great performance. Let's talk about the future. I need for people to pay attention to the weights. Let me give you an easy rule of thumb that you can follow. If the fight's at 130, Shakur Stevenson's going to win it. And that includes a fight against one of the few. And it's less than 10 guys, folks one of the few in boxing who can carry a pay-per-view, and that's Gervonta Davis, right? Davis has fought at 130 before, right? If the fight's at 130, I think Shakur Stevenson beats Gervonta Davis. Let me also say, too, that if you research Davis, you're going to find out that Davis has an extensive amateur pedigree, just like Shakur Stevenson, right? Both of these guys are much better than their ages and personas suggest, right? Stevenson always looks low key. Folks, he has a calculator upstairs, right? Gervonta Davis has the bigger punch than Stevenson. At 130, I would take Stevenson over Gervonta Davis, right? Understand, Stevenson just beat an unbeaten fighter, right? At 130, and Davis has had some weight problems. I don't believe Gervonta Davis's punch would resonate as much. Let's remember, too, when Gervonta Davis fought Mario Barrios, he's getting out boxed in the fight. Also, Barrios a little bit different than Shakur Stevenson. Barrios looked like he was leaning over the pocket. Guess what? Barrios was leaning over the pocket. Stevenson looks the same way early, right, in an exchange. But then you notice Stevenson has a center of gravity that allows him to just lean his head back, right? Stevenson's only over the pocket at the beginning of the exchange, I think Stevenson beats Gervonta Davis at 130. Now, 135, 
it gets perilous, right? Because then the puncher doesn't have to lose as much weight to make weight. And that punch starts mattering. Now, you and I know we're about to hear that we have an undisputed champ at 135, right? All eyes need to be at 135. This is one of the most loaded divisions in boxing, right? Cambosis is about to fight Devin Haney, who I understand has sparred with Shakur Stevenson, right? You also have Lomachenko. Now, he's a guy I believe... Stevenson needs to stay away from because Lomachenko is the final card. In other words, Lomachenko is ambidextrous. He sees you using a rangefinder, and he'll use that against you. Also, Loma can fight backing up. Also, as good as Stevenson is at changing the angles, right? Stevenson can be in front of you, then be beside you. Right? Just to understand, in my opinion, no one in the sport moves as well as Lomachenko. Right? If Stevenson were to sign to fight Lomachenko, my bet would be on the over in rounds. This fight went the distance. A fight with Loma would be five pounds up. Right? My logic being, hey, Stevenson's bringing 130 pound power to the 135 pound division right i would expect a chess match to play out some of the knockouts on lomachenko's record are really opponents saying that's it i can't beat this guy i give up it's not guys hitting the canvas right and so i would expect the over in a fight between stevenson and lomachenko right Stevenson Cambosis is interesting because Cambosis has ring coverage that Valdez here didn't have. All you have to do is look at the knockdown Cambosis did of the takeover. Right, Teofimo Lopez. Cambosis has ring coverage. Stevenson would have to fight a different fight there. Right, Stevenson couldn't rely on spacing like he did here. Right, I will say, Stevenson, Devin Haney, and I know some of you have seen the sparring sessions between the two. Okay, I understand there's a difference of opinion out there. Right, but Stevenson to me is better than Devin Haney in terms of exchanges. Right, Haney relies on his legs more than Stevenson does. Stevenson can actually outthink you and then work you over in the pocket. Right, so pay close attention to 135. The names are big, folks. Cambosis, Haney, Gervonta Davis, Lomachenko. Right, it's just a matter of time before Stevenson ends up at 135. You're talking about boxing at the highest level. Let me also finally close by saying, when I talk about young fighters, I'll emphasize people like Boots Ennis, who doesn't have a title. I'll emphasize, you know, Virgil Ortiz, right? These are up and coming fighters you need to know about. Let's also throw in, um, Erickson Lubin, I know he just lost. He's still immensely talented, you know, and young. I'll talk about those guys. Understand that Stevenson in his career is already ahead of those guys because Stevenson has won multiple titles, right? So this is the young guy who's at the start of a career that could end up being We'll call it a Mayweather-Canelo career. In other words, the guy's collecting titles by the time a lot of the public knows about him. The guy's going to be off in another weight class trying to add to his title collection. Right? This is a fighter you need to watch. I believe a fight between him and Gervonta Davis 
at 130 pounds would be box office gold. I'll say 135, it gets a little perilous. Let's be even more ridiculous than that. The problem with 140 is once you go there, you can't go back, right? Once a young guy gains weight, let's say he bypasses 135. Let's say Josh Taylor loses his mind and says, I want to fight Shakur Stevenson, right? By the way, I think Stevenson wins that fight. Well, just to understand, the problem is if you're a young guy and suddenly you gain 10 pounds to fight at 140, it's very hard to then lose the weight and feel the same, dropping back down to 130 or 135. But make no mistake, Stevenson has skills that will negate weight disadvantages. Right? The fact that this is a young guy who's actually conscientious of spacing like he is. The fact that this is a guy who, when you get inside, he already knows how to clinch you. There's no panic, right? You know there's no panic just looking at the first round, right? Seeing Stevenson just calmly flick a jab as Oscar Valdez, who stopped Miguel Burchell, is jumping in the pocket, should tell you that this guy is the unemotional chess player, right? Don't fall for his baby face. Right? You look at him and you say, oh, here's a young guy. What does he have? No, no, no. This is an old soul in his 30s. Right? Chronologically, he's in his 20s. This is an old soul who obviously has studied the game, who's taken a very cerebral approach. Right? I used to say here during his career that Floyd Mayweather's biggest advantage in the brain, and I still think this, is that Floyd outthought you, right? I'll agree, Floyd was a freak athlete, here trigger left hook, had some athletic skills. But when you were watching a Floyd fight, and Floyd was a slow starter, right? Floyd would basically look at you the first couple of rounds, right? You understood that Mayweather was just computing everything, and Mayweather knew that certain opponents, Marquez, for example, couldn't move with him, right? Contrast how hard it was for Manny Pacquiao to beat Marquez, if you consider Marquez as having lost to Manny Pacquiao. And then turn on the Mayweather fight. Mayweather makes it look easy. That's Shakur Stevenson, right? This is the guy who you see him, and sure, Stevenson has hand speed, right? Stevenson, you know, is an athlete, okay, I'm, I'm not downplaying the athleticism, but the real advantage Shakur Stevenson has is knowing, okay, if I, if I shoot a jab, then I turn it into a range finder, then I just start probing the guy with the jab. As long as I have my right hand extended, this guy can't hit me with the left hook. Then reaching the point in the fight where he's looking at the opponent and he says, okay, Valdez is too far outside to hit me with the left hook. Let me just drop this hand, right? When you're watching a guy who is landing way too many jabs, way too many jabs on Valdez, and you realize Shakur Stevenson understands he can win this fight with just one punch, you know you're dealing with a cerebral fighter, right? Consider Shakur Stevenson to be extremely dangerous and among the best in the sport pound for pound. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.